Okay, so the next video here is about the I.O. settings. We have successfully connected and we have loaded a base map to our ECU now in the previous videos. And what we're going to do now is check that our wiring connectivity is correct because the ECU needs to know where the signals are coming in. If you've loaded all, then these settings are overwritten by the map you've loaded. So if you do that, be sure to check them. If you've just loaded tuning data only with the load wizard, then these settings are not overwritten. So if you're using a plug and play ECU, they will stay as they were. So the two most important things here are the ADC settings, which are the analog signal settings, and the output settings. Starting with the ADC settings, you can see here how the manifold pressure signal is coming from, sorry, sorry the manifold, pressure signal is mapped to the map raw line, TPS to TPS raw, IAT to intake air temp raw, and so on. So this is telling us where the pin in the real world is being read onto, where the data is going to go. So for example, if we swapped our IAT raw values around, then we could use the different wires on the ECU. But this allows you to configure the analog input settings. So it's very important just to check these and make sure that yes, on the IAT signal line, which is the orange wire, you indeed have the intake air temperature sensor. And these should always end in raw. They should not end in without the raw. The raw there because it is a raw piece of data coming in from the outside world. The next stage is the output settings. The most important one on this is the coil rest state. If you are driving the coils directly with our ECU, if you are using, um, for example, a Ford coil pack and you're using the inbuilt coil drivers, then you would have this set to normal. However, if you're using a coil which has a logic type drive, for example, on an MX-5, then this would be on inverted. All of these should pretty much match what they do. So coil A should fire coil A, coil B should fire coil B and so on. And if you go further down here, you've got your LS, which are your spare low side drivers. And you can see here how LS1 is going to be used for the fuel pump, LS2 is going to be used for the primary fan and so on. And we can change these as we see fit. For example, if we put a check en engine lamp on LS2, then we can change it here. That way when the software flags the check engine lamp, the signal will go out of the LS2 pin. So with those settings checked here, then we can confirm that everything is working as it should and it allows us to move on to the next stage which will be calibrating the sensors. Thanks.